Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I use the expression that my partner steps aside. In the information given this day that I have channeled to my partner, you learn there are many parts of you. The part that steps aside, the corporeal survival brain, allows the portal that is the pineal, it is the intuitive part, to become bigger. Channeling is nothing more than a wide open intuition, allowing for a full stream of information in a non-linear way coming from source. Through the last 25 years, what my partner has been able to do is to linearize this through agreements and practice so that it sounds like we are coming to you normal human speech. Using my partner's intellect, his abilities to speak, his language, his vocabulary, all of that, I want you to pay attention. Channeling uses the abilities of the human being. It is not supernatural. All channeling that has ever been accurate and true has come through a human being in this way. The highest scriptures of the planet written in this way, channeled they are. The most wisdom that you've ever had from shamanic energies has been channeled in this way. Using the human being's culture, experience, language, and the mechanics of their body. It is an honoring, therefore, of humanity that it is delivered in this way. Do you understand, dear ones, that if what you call God wanted to talk to you, really, in a way that would frighten you or show the magnificence of God, there are other ways. But that is not the way the benevolence works of the God that's inside of you. It always comes through a human being. It always comes through you. You might even say that synchronicity and co-creation is like mini-channeling. You open enough to get the messages that you need for you at the time. And we have said this before. So what you hear today and what is being said today coming through the human being today, even though he steps aside, is about you. We've gone through the lineage of what is happening on this planet so many times for you. Starting in 2011, talking about what was going to happen in 2012, in 2012, talking about what happened in 2013, and now you sit in the middle of 2014. The message today, I would like to tell you who it's for. Not just those in this room. The who being a generic whom. It is for those who have awakened spiritually to a point where they believe what they're hearing is true. Those who are interested in the God inside and have invested their time and effort and intent to find it. That's who this is for. And in the old soul category, that would then include you. Not all old souls are awakened. And not all those who are awakened are old souls. But when you get both together, it's magic. Those who would sit in a room like this 
for the duration that you have to listen to the information no matter what your chronological age will be are generally old souls and the magic is that the information is taken in and acted upon quicker than not so this is why I sit in front of you I would like to tell you more about this shift we're going to label this particular channel the attributes of change I'm going to start by describing the timing of all things spiritual you might wonder if spirit coordinates things with human calendars it would appear that we do we talk about 2012 we talk about 2013 I will now reveal to you that these are simply linear compartments that we put things in because this is what you do it's not always accurate we talk in generalizations when it comes to the clock for many reasons there are no absolute timings things are driven by human consciousness the kinds of things we speak of the attributes of the shift are driven by the timing of human consciousness shift and that is unknown by anyone the parameters all fall within the potential clock that you have but it's not always that way now what I mean by that is that in the middle of what we perhaps thought would happen and be cleared by a certain date may be faster or take longer depending upon what happens on the planet and the free choice that you have now we tell you this so that you will not then someday take a look at prophecy or or hold readers to their word that something would happen here or there they're a year off you should know that the best reader on the planet can only read the now and the now is the potential of tomorrow not the absolute of tomorrow and so there is what we will call wiggle room for a lot of things we said that 2013 was the year of calibration it actually started in 2011 there are many of you who have a longer process than others it is part of your human design your timing cycle that things would take a great deal of time and some of you are fast again humanity is very very varied and so this will then explain why well, some had this happen and it took forever and others had something happen like a flash in the pan each human being is unique but the process of this shift is generic and that is to say all humanity is involved at a certain time in a certain way now let us take a look at the timing of the shift the absolutes guided by the ancient traditions and also the astronomy of today center it around the precession of the equinoxes and this is why you celebrated the shift when you did it is why the meetings took place that should have taken place when they did because no one knows the true parameters of how human consciousness is going to react to the things around it what I want to tell you is this you're sitting here in July of 2014 and I want to tell you dear ones this is where it begins 
Now you should have known that if you wanted to look at the potentials of the astronomical attributes in the sky. If you want to look at the astrology, if you want to take a look at the energies put upon the earth and to you individually, collectively at this point in time in July you're going to see something, a confluence of energy that would help the process of clearing and new beginnings. It would have been convenient, would it not, to say that 2014 was the end of the problem. The 2013, December 31st, it was all over. But you're smarter than that, aren't you? You know that your calendar does not necessarily correspond with the energies of the planet. All this to say that some of the issues of 2013 dragged right into the first six months of this year. And now for the first time, for the first time, the clearing actually has begun. So this is the time where we can start talking perhaps about change. It's going to be simple. Perhaps the lecture today was complex. <laughs> this is simple. I want you to take a look at what is going on. We have described this shift before and we have told you it is very much like retuning into a radio station which has slightly changed its broadcast frequency. And so you're going to have to go over and turn the knob to center it up with the broadcast. We've told you that almost everything is going to feel a little off. Now depending upon the human being and the setup of the human being, the life lessons, the karma perhaps which was not dropped or dropped, will depend upon the setup of how you're affected. So in this particular case, if you have a hundred people, there will be a hundred ways that you feel it, and they may be different. But this little off could be in your spirituality, it could be in your relationship, it could be at work, it could be health. It could be how centered you feel in your body. It depends upon this, dear ones, how close is your walk with the spiritual side inside you? How close is that walk? And I will tell you, the closer that walk is, the more you're feeling it. The radio station has moved and it's just a little off. You now are not hearing the music clearly. It's just a little distorted and in the distance and you're going to have to retune to it. Now that is a metaphor. Don't take it any further than that. And that is now starting to shift. Change. What do you do with it? How do you retune to it? What is the process? It's difficult to explain, is it not? To a hundred human beings which are all very different what each one is supposed to do? And we can't. But we can describe what is happening so that you can cognize it and start to work on yourself to center it up. It's interesting how human beings react to change, but specifically this change. Because there's an attribute of this shift that I want to tell you, which is unique on the planet and never has happened before. We have told you about energies coming and going. We have said there's this happening, there's this happening. We've told you about shifts that astrology brings in. You've never had this, dear ones, never. It's a new energy. 
so new that it's never going to go back. And that means to all of you one thing, and I want you to pay attention. There are several points of this message that I want you to get, and this is one. It will never be the same. Never. And there are human beings instinctively, intuitively, waiting for it to return. Because it always has. And it isn't going to. Perhaps in this room or listing there are healers. Perhaps there are readers, mediums, channelers, who are trying to wait it out. They realize that they have lost something and they're not really certain what, but it doesn't feel the same. The results are often so different from their readings or their healings that some have actually stopped for a while and are waiting for it to return to normal and there is no more normal. It is not coming back. And so the invitation should be clear. Get up and find out how to tune to a vibration which you have never tuned to before but which is there waiting for you to tune to it waiting for you, expects it. This is what you were designed for. Your biology is shouting at you. The innate of your body wants you to feel it and know what to do and how to make it operate. So much of it is intuitive consciousness. Things that you cannot identify and label to your satisfaction because they don't fit into a, a numbered list. Intent, ceremony, it's different for all of you. But it wants to pull upon each one of you as you start to realign to it. This is difficult for a human being to understand. You're so used to pushing the rock uphill that there is something now that is waiting for you and when you discover it you'll click right into it and it's back it's not back it's just that you are now there where it is what's interesting and let me talk about light workers there are three basic reactions that are happening right now to old souls and light workers specifically in what you would call light work the healers the mediums the intuitives the channeler three basic reactions and they're very very human you can put yourself in whatever category you want number one category <laughs> you can't do it you don't know how it's too hard it's not working anymore so you're gonna quit you may go to another part of light working. You're still going to help human beings and there's no judgment. You just know you can't do it. Perhaps it's not something you want to do. So you walk away from perhaps decades of doing one thing in order to do something similar that you think is understandable because what you've been doing is not. It's happening. In that, there are variances of degrees. Some will simply alter it a little bit. Some will actually stop and turn their back on God. Because it's too hard. Maybe some of you know him. The second reaction. <laughs> How human. Complain. <laughs> a steady stream of complaints gives you an actionable thing to do without having to change <laughs> and you'll do it for the rest of your life it used to be this way I don't know why it isn't now I'm trying I'm wishing I'm hoping I'm waiting I'm complaining and I always will and you know I'm right that's their way of solving the puzzle 
a puzzle that has no solution that they can see. Complaining is easier. And the third one, and there's only three, are the old souls and the light workers who are sitting not knowing what to do and being frustrated. <laughs> and maybe that's you. There are very few who have grasped it and moved that dial and are complacent with the change. And that's because it has only just begun. It took till July to clear. Now the energy that is coming is commensurate to your intuitive approach to find that station. Did you understand that? In other words, there is a benevolent energy pulling you toward the truth of how to work with it. And every single one of you have a unique energy that's doing that. It's beautiful. What a system that it knows your name. That it knows all about the Akash and what you've been through and how many lifetimes you've been and what you're drawn to and where you'll go. What you're called to and where your interests are. It is a new paradigm of dealing with spirit where it knows you. Where there's a handshake you never had before. And where you'll know where that new station is and you'll know the handshake and you're right where you belong. This is far more personal than it's ever been before. There are mediums and healers and intuitives and channelers that simply read and intuit and channel and heal. And it's been something they do. It's never been personal. And now it can be. Imagine. Imagine going to a level where each one of these things you do, you'll feel. You'll feel that higher self of you who knows you in touch with you. You'll know you're in the groove. This is new. Now is when the change can begin. You might want to take a look at your astrology. You might want to take a look at the planetary aspects. You might want to take a look at even what the ancients have said. And in the process you will know what I'm speaking of. There is a clearing here. This is really the beginning of what could have been in 2014 in January. It just took a little longer. I'm not going to get into the attributes that are happening on the planet. I want to just, I want to concentrate on you. We don't have a lot of advice. Only to give you the parameters of the fact that the clearing begins now and there's nothing wrong with you if you haven't cleared it yet. And if you've been frustrated, welcome to the club. Because humanity, light workers, and old souls right now are all in this bag. Very few can raise their hands and say, I've figured it out. Because <laughs> they haven't. I want you to be patient, dear ones. I want you to see this as the beginning of an opening. Now here is the first advice we have for change. Your body has a, a way of working. And it always has worked this way. When there is an imbalance, you work on balancing. Easy. But that means you work on bringing it back to where it was. So the intuitive, instinctive thing for the human to do with all change is to try somehow to bring it back to normal. Even if you move your house, you create the same kind of room you had in the last house. 
Your habits are the same and you try to reconfigure who you are to the new house. You change professions, jobs, whatever. You try to fit it into the groove that you understand and that you're comfortable in. But it's not going to be that way. You are going to have to redefine normal. And that means it's not coming back. It's not about rebalancing. It's about going someplace else. Literally, in your consciousness and creating a new normal. I want to give you an example of this. And how difficult it is. Let us say that you are a world-class surgeon and you work in hospitals and you know what you're doing. And all your life, all you have done in that profession is to help people and save their lives. And this is your passion. You come to the hospital and there are the tools and there's the technology. There's the electronics, there's the, the, the mechanics, all of these things. There's the medicine that you understand in order for you to operate on a patient and save their life. One day you wake up and a shift has occurred. You go to the hospital and the tools are different. The electronics are different. You don't know what turns it on now. You don't know how to operate it, calibrate it. The tools are in odd shape. And to make things worse, just when you've tried to figure them out, and you have, you wake up the next day and they changed again. And this is the metaphor of the spiritual healer on this planet who has used the tools of spirit, their intuition, their pineal, and all of the things that they understand so well, the feelings that they have, the energy they have, only to show up, sit in front of another human being, and there's nothing there. You don't have the energy, you don't have the, the other markers, to use that word. That let you read them and heal them. So here's what I want you to figure out. Here's what truly is going on. There is a, I'm going to call it a consistency of frequency. You leave the room today and you may get into a certain kind of car and you're comfortable with your car because you know where everything is let's say that you leave the room tomorrow and it's another car you leave it the next day and it's another car there would be a frustration would there not but here's what I'm telling you here's what I want you to understand Dear ones, this is a simple metaphor. It's the best we have. In the car example, there are consistencies you can count on. The brake is always in the same place. The accelerator is always in the same place. The steering wheel is always in the same place. The things you've got to figure out is where are the gears? How do they work? Where is the windshield wiper and the lights? And once you have the peripherals figured out, you can drive it just as well. Imagine, however, that every day that you have a new car, this new car you have to get used to is better than the last one. It's more elegant. It's more comfortable. It lets you drive on the road so much better than you ever had before. But there is a consistency. There's three kinds of people. <laughs> One who will immediately see the issue and they'll quit. I don't want to learn to drive another car. The second one will complain. This shouldn't be happening. This shouldn't be happening. If they get in car after car and don't understand any of them. 
and the third kind who will look at it and say, ah, I see the steering wheel in the same place. I see the gas is in the same place. <laughs> now, where is the windshield wiper? I'll figure it out. Which one of those are you? Spirit has given a consistency, and that's the best I can tell you. So that when you get to the place where you understand the minutia of the change, truly, the driving force, the majority, will be identical to what you're used to. And it'll all work the same. So the surgeon is smart. He's figured it out. He walks into the hospital because now he knows that every time he figures out the new tools are going to be better. He's going to save more lives. Now he can hardly wait. He said, I can realign to this. It's only going to take me a moment because I figured it out. The electronics, all I have to do is find out where the new on button is. <laughs> the tools are shaped a little different because they've improved themselves. All I have to do is figure out what the improvements are. And I can hardly wait. Do you see the attitude difference? Now, who are you? Which one are you? And the only admonition in this shift, in these changes that are only just beginning for you, don't try to figure them out. Because just as soon as you think you did, they're going to move on you. How is it a human being can get used to constant change? Where the thing that you were most satisfied with before was consistency of operation, and now every time you show up, it's a little different. It's a big hurdle. It's a new paradigm. I want you to follow the logic of this. In a new earth, in a new planet, you really think you're going to get into an ascension status when things remain the same? You think we're going to take you to another level and it's just going to sit there forever? You are now on a path of consistent change. The children know all about it. They're ready for it. Today's young people expect it. It doesn't bother them at all, light worker. What about you? I present this information so you'll be comfortable. I know you can do it. Watch for consistency of operation. With the changes being in what you would call the minutia around it. A reader is always a reader, a healer is always a healer, a channeler is always a channeler, and their tools are getting better. That's the message of the day. There come a time when we'll start describing the tools. Not now. I want you to get used to the shift and the change and what it means. And remember, don't look for anything to return to normal. Normal changes every day when you open your eyes. And so it is.